7 News with Peter Mitchell. Behind bars, the Melbourne masterminds at the centre of a major international drug trafficking racket. Uh, we're talking large quantities of high-grade heroin. What's in a name? Athletics Australia under fire for calling its team the Diggers. And Opossum, a rescue with a difference, which has Melbourne's emergency service crews stretched to the limit. Good evening. First tonight, the end of the road for two men at the centre of one of Melbourne's largest drug rings. The heroin high rollers dealt drugs from the Crown Casino complex while gambling millions of dollars across its tables. A far cry from the lavish lifestyle he led since his arrival in Australia four years ago, flamboyant high roller Ko Kong Tong now faces 16 years jail. These pictures forming part of the evidence of the National Crime Authority investigation it's resulted in the 45-year-old being found guilty of operating the Melbourne end of an international heroin trafficking racket. His co-accused 42-year-old Hong Kong-based supplier Vin Lak Lo was sentenced to 21 years jail. Found guilty of the delivery and distribution of three consignments of heroin, the last seized by police weighing almost 7 kilograms with a street value of many millions of dollars. During the months of police surveillance in 1999, Mr Tong rarely left the Crown Casino complex and over the two-year period prior to his arrest, he gambled a total turnover of $416 million, earning a commission of $2.5 million on that turnover. County Court Judge Anthony Duckett said the pair had sought financial reward from the misery and death of others. Members of the community now victims of their irresponsible and extravagant lifestyle. This is a significant result for the National Crime Authority. Uh, we're talking large quantities of high-grade heroin. Four others in the syndicate are due to be sentenced next week. Louise Pennell, 7 News. Ballarat residents are being urged to take extra security measures to protect their homes and their children. Police suspect one attacker is responsible for a series of aggravated nighttime burglaries and the sexual assault of two young girls asleep in their beds. Police are desperate to catch this man. He's broken into nine Ballarat homes in the dead of night, stealing cash, alcohol and credit cards, using the cards to withdraw cash, having also found the PIN numbers in victims' handbags. Because he has a very prominent, distinctive nose and a number of our uh, victims have reported um, that stands out. Police are conducting an intensive search of vacant land near his victims' homes and door-knocking hundreds of residents. Police say the man's crimes have escalated dramatically in recent weeks, including a terrifying sexual assault on two young girls. They fear he will strike again. Five-year-old and seven-year-old uh, girls, two young sisters, uh, were woken by the offender and he committed serious sexual offences on those children. Two nights ago he struck twice between 1.30 and 2.30 in the morning, so it is more than likely that if he has the opportune time that he will strike again. He was also found in another little girl's bedroom but fled when she woke and screamed. Residents say they won't feel safe until he is captured. Yeah, well I get up during the night and check the kids to make sure that you can't be too sure. It certainly makes you want to beef it up a bit. But the security. The security yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd like to think that home you can be safe. Police suspect the man could be a local resident. Dean Allen Craig, 7 News. John Howard has secured a guarantee from Mitsubishi to keep their Australian plants open. But the Prime Minister says the promise has been hard won, with the local car industry still crippled by striking workers. The problems in our car industry are as big as the limo John Howard used on arrival in Tokyo. Back home, the jobs of up to 50,000 Australians are on the line as 300 workers at the TriStar Steering Parts Factory in Sydney strike over demands for better protection of their entitlements. It was taken at the most sensitive spot in the supply chain so that those factories could be closed. Workplace Relations Minister Tony Abbott says the actions of striking unionists are treasonous. It's been caused by Kim Beasley's stormtroops. Uh, they appear to be uh, sabotaging this industry at a critical stage. In Japan, Mr Howard met Mitsubishi executives seeking guarantees the company's Australia operations would remain open. At Mitsubishi's Adelaide plant, production has been crippled by the TriStar strike. Mitsubishi today confirmed what it announced in March, that it would proceed with the upgrade of the Magna and Varada models at its Adelaide plant. It is very good news for the Mitsubishi workers. Uh, there's no reason on the basis of that investment that there shouldn't be continuity of employment until at least about 2005. 
Ford, Holden and Mitsubishi have all started laying off their workforces. Some are still getting paid, some are not. The union has promised industrial action will spread unless employers agree to pay into a trust fund to protect workers against incompetent and unscrupulous bosses. In Canberra, Jeff Pack, seven years. And Victoria's building site workers are on strike, walking off the job after the workplace death of a colleague yesterday. Building sites around Melbourne remained empty as 40,000 union employees stayed away in a mark of respect to the dead man's family. We were not to use our industrial abilities to pursue, pursue safety in the manner that we do. A lot more workers would die in our industry. The 42-year-old father of four died after the scissor lift he was operating toppled, sending him crashing 11 metres to the ground. Athletics Australia has admitted it might have made a mistake naming its team for the World Championships the Diggers. Officials are now considering withdrawing the name after being accused of cashing in on our Anzac heritage. Athletics Australia has been hit by a barrage of criticism, none more vocal than the RSL. Has, it's an iconic name. It's like the Anzacs. It has a very special place in our history and uh, it just uh, doesn't seem right to use it uh, for this small select group. Athletics Australia says it understands what the name Diggers means to all Australians. We're trying to, to pay tribute to that spirit and uh, recognise it in the environment of international sport. But real diggers and their descendants don't buy it. I'm an ex-serviceman and uh, I lost part of my family overseas. I don't see why they have any right to use that word. No, it's rubbish. Diggers are old soldiers, swimmers and athletes, no way. Shouldn't happen. The name was chosen after a nationwide competition and the RSL was contacted before the winner was announced. They weren't in a position to give complete approval because they don't own the name. Forget complete approval, the RSL says it gave no support whatsoever. Oh, I was a bit surprised. Uh, they consulted with us a week ago and we advised against it. The National Servicemen's Association will ask the federal government to legislate to stop the name being used. I'm not surprised that politicians have sought to, to uh, get involved in this. That's what politicians do. Nick McArdle, 7 News. Melbourne's bagpipe busker is back playing his tunes at Flinders Street Station tonight after a compromise with the Melbourne City Council. Brian McLaughlin was fined $150 after being banned from the area in which he claims to have been performing for the past 18 years. The Connex train's head office is above the busker's favourite site. Workers complained the noise was excessive. The council has now agreed to a trial of rostered performing times outside office hours, but the fine won't be waived. An emergency with a difference for police and firefighters last night when a Hawthorne family raised the alarm after they were woken by an armour-clad intruder. A rustling in the trees, the crim caught in action. Last resort, I'll ring the police and say there's a kitty stuck in my tree. <laughs> you know, I didn't think they'd take me seriously. And Police did, but it wasn't a cat. A brush-tailed possum underestimated its size and became stuck in a chimney. Firefighters and police had their hands full trying to catch the furry creature who gave them the slip, forcing its way out of a tight spot, collecting the flu on its way out. It's actually dropped down and ran across the driveway, um, attempted to get up another tree, but it was prevented by the casing that was wrapped around it. Undeterred, the Ned Kelly lookalike was caught and whisked away to the animal hospital. However, it soon became apparent the distressed possum wasn't only trying for a quick escape, she was protecting the baby tucked away in her pouch. Once released from the chimney's grip, officers thought it'd be pretty easy to release her back into the shrubbery. But it was almost a case of deja vu, the possum deciding the cage carrier could be a perfect new home. Then having second thoughts. Carolee Tulvern, 7 News. Coming up next, an appeal fails a brutal killer to stay behind bars for life. And keeping pace, a special honour for Melbourne's Orchid Man. We know what the modern-day footballer looks like. We'll go nude. We're going to nude it up. But what about the retired player who's been around the block a few times? You've got to go and do it again, Shaw. You didn't go through the interchange game. We're making calendars for these guys tonight on 7. The wait is great. The great boy. Forty Winks present the greatest bedroom event of the new century. Forty Winks, great bedroom sale. 
Save up to $1,000 on bedroom suites and top brand bedding. That's right. Save up to $1,000. Save up to $300 on kid suites. Save up to $200 on sofa beds. Great bedroom sale catalogue now available in store. No deposit. Up to 24 months. Interest-free terms. On now. Wait, wait. 40 weeks. Didn't think you could afford an authentic hand knotted Persian masterpiece? The Showgrounds Mega Rug Liquidation Sale makes it a reality. These only $1.99. In fact, every rug 55 to 85% off. It doesn't get any better than this. For a frozen pizza to be this perfect, it must be a miracle. McCain Pizza Perfection. Ah, McCain, mm. it's a miracle again. Things were lonely after the kids had left and Bob still had his job. It started out just filling in time, but it became almost every day. Then I forgot about Sarah's special person's day at a kinder. I mean, how could I get so caught up? It wasn't until I got home that I realised what I'd done. It all came out. Mum, and you're about to have your electricity cut off. The bills. making a scene in front of your father. It was very important to her, and you were. Even how I'd used our savings. Please don't take that to My biggest loss was Bob and Robin's trust. You get things sorted out. Well, that call was the first step. Two o'clock, be all right. Oh, Bev's been such a big help, and Robin's even bringing little Sarah over next weekend. Think of what you're really gambling with. Call Gambler's Help on 1800 156 789. Teachers are kissing students. What? You kiss Dana Bull? If you want my resignation, you got it. Students are getting caught by teachers. And teachers are getting with teachers. And that's all before the lunch bell. Monday on Boston Public. More than 10,000 people will give up their beds for a night to take part in Melbourne City Mission's winter sleepout appeal on August the 11th. The fundraising effort began this morning at the new Melbourne Museum, one of several planned sleepout locations. Every year, people of all ages brave the cold to help homeless youth and families. But for those who prefer the warmth, workers can arrange a sleep in, donating $10 for the privilege of starting work an hour late. Convicted killer Peter Dupas will remain behind bars for life after his appeal was rejected today. The decision brought tears of relief from the family of his last victim. Her death described by judges as the worst type of murder. Described as a monster, an evil sex offender, a Jekyll and Hyde who worms his way into women's confidence. But Peter Dupas will never walk the streets again. His appeal against his conviction and life sentence without parole thrown out by the state's highest court. That decision closing a traumatic chapter for the family of Nicole Patterson. That's the, the worst they can give him, so that's what he's got and he deserves every bit of it. And I hope he's miserable for the rest of his life. The 28-year-old psychotherapist was stabbed to death after scheduling a counselling session with Dupas at her Northcote home. She didn't know the 48-year-old had a long history of violent sex crimes against women and periods in jail. I'd like to say I question a system that, that releases a man that has spent 30 years preying on women. The judges agreed Dupas represented a continuing danger to the community, partly because of his intelligence and his ability to pass himself off to women as a decent man. Nicole's mother says there's no question he would kill again if released oh, from jail. Would. It wouldn't matter how old he was, somebody else would die. Police also suspect Dupas of other murders, including the Faulkner Cemetery death of Messina Helvagas. I will not forgive him. He's taken too much from me and my family. Pauline Braniff, 7 News. Mixed performances on a lacklustre day of trade on the share market. AMP dropped back 5 cents. Commonwealth Bank was down 64 cents. Telstra fell 5 cents and Woolworths 23. BHP Billiton firmed 11 cents. The All Ordinaries rose slightly. The Australian dollar buys 51.73 US cents, 36 pence, 58 euro and 60 yen, 64 yen. Police are investigating a massive bomb blast in West London which injured six people. The explosion happened outside a body shop store near the Ealing Underground Station. Police say the device was detonated in a car, blasting it into the air and showering passers-by with glass. Police had rushed to the area before the explosion after receiving a terrorist's warning, but no group has claimed responsibility. 
And Tom Cruise has avoided a showdown with estranged wife Nicole Kidman at the New York premiere of their latest film. Kidman walked the red carpet as the star of Others, but Cruise, the movie's executive producer, was a no-show. Anything going on in the personal life we should know about? Anything? Any boyfriends? Anybody special? Is that a bad question? Hi. Yes? How are you? Going what, is, what is the question? Who is, the question was... The film's next premiere is in Hollywood, where, again, only one of the former couple is likely to appear. A 92-year-old Melbourne man is setting a frantic pace when it comes to matters of the heart. Renowned as an international orchid expert, he's just been told he too is a prize specimen. Gerald McCraith was just a teenager when he first heard the word orchid. So I thought that's a, a glamorous name, not a clue what it meant. So he set about finding out what he could about the exotic flowers, a quest that's taken him around the world. This is another species from Ecuador, and I'm rather fond of that. He's still globetrotting, not bad for a bloke whose heart almost gave out six years ago. He says his pacemaker keeps him ticking. Its developers agree, naming him a champion of the heart, one of only 16 in the world. Oh, maybe my good looks. It's an award given to only a very few people around the world who have continued to work after they've had their pacemaker in. Pressed to choose his favourite bloom, he chose this, a unique tribute to his late wife. Memoria Ellen McCraith, in memory of my dear wife who passed away a couple of years ago. We were together for 64 years and that speaks for itself, I think. Emma Power, 7 News. And Seven News is flying high tonight after taking to the air with our new state-of-the-art helicopter. The squirrel chopper took a trip over Docklands today for a bird's-eye view of the station's new home. The high-tech chopper will be a valuable addition to Seven News' gathering team, helping to bring you the stories that matter to Melbourne. Next, though, it's the sport that matters yeah. to Melbourne with Jim Wilson. Thanks, Mitch. Coming up, England holding the upper hand after an amazing start to the third test. And back in the box, but Peter Schwab leaves the talking to Chris Connolly. Tonight, unclaimed millions just waiting to be collected, a battler's bonanza which could be yours. Plus a unique challenge, the Aussie faith healer who'll win a fortune if he can prove his psychic powers and a crazy case of mistaken identity. How'd you like to win this day with Takuma? Easy. You've got all weekend to work this puzzle out and phone as many times as you'd like until 11 a.m. on Monday. 1902 555 is the number. If we pick your name out, you could be partnering one of our contestants in the 20th anniversary state challenge. On Tuesday, the 7th of August, every household is required to fill in a census form. Every single answer counts. So wherever you are, please fill in the form on census night. Because in planning a better future, we're counting on you. Great. The million dollar closing down sale is on only at Australian Lighting. Moorabbin, Nunna Warding and Thomastown. Halogen Downlight, complete with 3,000 hour globe and atco transformer, 1590. 30 centimetre Italian alabaster oyster light, a crazy 1480. Halogen 3 light spot, an unbelievable 8990. 500 watt halogen floodlight, a ridiculous 990. 3 in 1 bathroom heater, $109. Bargains for builders at the closing down sale, only at Australian Lighting, Moorabbin, Nunna Warding and Thomastown. He's got him plum LBW. But no, the umpire hasn't given him up. Extraordinary. Travelex are proud to sponsor Australia's Ashes Tour. You may not know that we're the world's largest foreign exchange specialists. Oh, he's gone this time. Caught behind. But again, the umpire's unmoved. How could he miss that? But you'd notice if we weren't there. Well, I can't fathom that one out at all. What the hell is that? It's off the train. Brace yourself for the hottest ride since the fugitive. <laughs> the Matrix's Lawrence Fishburne and Stephen Baldwin. Let's do this. Fled premieres Sunday. 
Hello everyone, football shortly, but an amazing start to the third Ashes Test with 17 wickets falling for just 290 runs, with England emerging with the upper hand at stumps. Glenn McGrath took five wickets to have the locals all out for 185, before England turned the tide to have Australia in tatters at seven for 105. England flourished early, Tudor passed fit and finally they won a toss. Then play started. Second ball, Atherton, court war, bowled McGrath. Replays, though, showed the decision was highly questionable. Oh, he can't believe it. He's gone for it. Despite the setback, Triscothic refused to be reined in. His partners weren't as adventurous. Butcher turned inside out by McGrath. Gone. And on the other side of a brief rain delay, Ramper crash went for 14. Gone. By now, Triscothic was a lone figure, bullying the attack, which in turn was beating up on his teammates. But on 69 and after 13 boundaries, Gillespie drew the mistake. No mistake by the Aussie wicketkeeper. The pressure was relentless. McGrath reappeared with instant Stand results. He's gone. First ball. That brought all round to Craig White to the crease, the man who last week accused the Aussies of being arrogant and complacent. White wasn't there long enough to find out. He didn't trouble the scorer before McGrath struck again. Uh, six wickets. Recalled spinner Croft was Warren's 100th Ashes wicket. Recession. McGrath wanted more of the limelight. Another five-wicket test hall, his 20th, and England's bones had been picked clean by Tees. Five wickets for McGrath yet again. Most of the Aussie tourists were loving it, but as Hayden and Slater attacked, there was little indication of the remarkable events to follow. Tudor was too good for Hayden on 33. Bixard has got him. Alex Tudor has struck. Slater got a thick inside edge to Goff. Ricky Ponting made only 14, his dismal run in test continuing. Here's good bowling from Goff, Ponting on the walk again. And when Caddick quickly claimed Steve Waugh, Martin and Warren, the Aussies had plunged from none for 48 to seven for 102. The benefits of McGrath's pre-T heroics had been seriously eroded. No, we're not looking for any excuses. They, they bowl well. We didn't bat as well as we uh, have done in the past. And uh, you know, hopefully tomorrow we can go out there and turn it around. In Nottingham, Pat Welch, Seven News. Now to footy and Carlton trio, Anthony Kudafides, Lance Whitnell and Mark Porter have surprised getting through today's fitness tests ahead of Sunday's blockbuster against Essendon. While Cooter and Porter look set to resume, a slight question mark remains over Whitnell. It was a sight to savour for Blues fans who've watched star after star succumb to injury this season. The big three inclusion surprising even insiders by training strongly. All now poised for shock early returns this weekend against Essendon. None of them will be playing, carrying any side effects at all. We'll be picking 22 fit players to take on Essendon. Two weeks ahead of schedule returning from a medial ligament, Whitnell will need to pull up well from today's hour and 10 minute session to reclaim his spot. Kudafidis was the most impressive of the three, Porter also moving well. Their rivals Essendon expect Dustin Fletcher and Mark McCurry to play after getting through late this afternoon. Dean Solomon missing training and in doubt with a shoulder injury. At Hawthorne, coach Peter Schwab will return to the box this weekend, but will again allow assistant coach Chris Connolly to take most of the regular duties. Whether I make the dash down at quarter time and three quarter time, probably not. Probably just stay in there. But I'll speak to the players at for the game and half time and after the game. And Hawthorne's man for all seasons, Trent Crowe, says the influence of mentor and former strongman Dermot Burton is not the reason for his newfound aggression, which resulted in a one-match suspension this week. What Dermot says to me doesn't really have too much effect on me, so in a, in a, in a negative way, so he's always been there for me. It's, it's all good. Chris Jones, 7 News. To golf and world number one, Kari Webber's made a slow start at the British Open. The Aussie trailing co-clubhouse leaders Laura Davies and Joanna Head by six shots, having fired a sluggish opening round of 74. The swimming in Grant Hackett has smashed Kieran Perkins' last remaining world record by almost 10 seconds at the Australian Short Course Championships in Perth. Fresh from his world-beating 1,500-metre swim at the world titles in Japan, Hackett blitzed the field in the 800 freestyle, touching in 7 minutes 25.23 seconds to again rewrite the history books. I've always been, you know, the one to do those sort of things to Kieran. I mean, we've been great rivals and it's been a great friendship. And, uh, you know, if he was here today, he'd be very pleased with his swim and I'm sure he'd be a great sportsman, as he was in Fukuoka. He's travelling very nicely, isn't he? Hit the purple yeah, patch. Fine. Yeah, now, I'm fingers crossed that Joseph gets his first win this weekend. Oh, really? I'd actually like to see Essendon win. Oh, good on you. <laughs> OK, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much, Jim. Next in seven years, weatherman David Brown takes a look at our weekend weather and calendar capers meet and greet to help promote the latest footy beefcake.
Tonight, a battle as bonanza unclaimed millions, how to make sure you're not missing out. Plus, a crazy case of mistaken identity which cost a woman her jewellery collection. They came together in 1901. Australia's daughters, Australia's sons. They made a nation strong and free and founded our democracy. In 1901, with a vote, not a war, six separate colonies joined together to create the Commonwealth of Australia. This year, our centenary of federation is a time to think about how we've built on that foundation and the kind of country we want for the future. Our land, Australia, has grown to be a nation. We live in freedom, live in peace, building on a strong foundation. We're building on a strong Australia, it's what we make it. <laughs> That'll never happen. That's why there's new Aleve. It works fast to relieve pain for 8 to 12 hours. A leave for all day pain relief from your pharmacy. Imagine an art collection which included paintings by Renoir, Cezanne, Modigliani, Matisse, Rousseau, Duran and Picasso. There is one such collection. The Musée de l'Orangerie Paris. And now, for the first and last time, it's coming to Australia. Unforgettable. Unrepeatable at the National Gallery of Victoria on Russell Street. So, do you reckon you could talk to Mum about it? Yeah, OK. Risotto, eh? Anything I can do? You can take the lid off. With new continental risotto sauce and a few basic ingredients, it's easy to make risotto part of your weekly menu. Mum, Chloe's mum can't take us to netball anymore. Butte. What do you think? like a restaurant. You and Continental Risotto Sauce, just brilliant. As you saw briefly, our hottest AFL players are in the spotlight again in front of their adoring fans. Some of the league's star players today launched the annual Men for All Seasons calendar, now in its 10th year. Hawthorne centre-half forward Trent Crowe made the cover, but insists he's a shy fellow and wanted to at least keep his shirt on. Joining the boys, some of Australia's female pin-up models, spending the afternoon signing autographs on the pumped-up Down Under calendar, which enjoys worldwide success. David Brown joins us now with the weather. Yes, thanks very much, Peter, and good evening. A cool to mild day in Melbourne, rather pleasant for this time of year. The maximum temperature is 14.5, and rain earlier this week brought a slight increase to Melbourne's water storage. It's currently at 49.6% capacity. Wesley College in Alstonwick recorded a maximum temperature of 16. Visibility was good, although uh, Yarra Valley Grammar and Nazareth College came in with fair visibility, less than 20 kilometres. Now, it was another frosty morning north of the ranges, mostly sunny skies this afternoon. Temperatures were uh, close to average for this time of year. And as we take a look at the uh, latest satellite image, we can see mostly clear skies over Victoria today. On the left of the screen, the cold front. We're expecting to bring some rain tomorrow night and Sunday. Some good falls are likely over the ranges and the air mass is cold enough for snow as well. Pressure pattern for tomorrow morning has that front closing in rather quickly. It should be through Adelaide by tomorrow morning. Strengthening northerly winds ahead of it. These northerly should reach 50 to 60 kilometres about the uh, west coast. Interstate up in Sydney should be fine and sunny to around about uh, 21 degrees. Fine also for Canberra, 14 degrees. Some rain, of course, in Adelaide, a much cooler day, 16 degrees. And some clearing rain for uh, Perth and a top there of 18 degrees. For Victoria, some cloud building up during the day. Those northerly strengthening, of course, about the west coast. And the rain moving into this region very, very late in the day and eventually spreading into the central core of Victoria tomorrow night. For the bays, the northerly winds are expected to average around about 15 to 20 knots and that means we'll see waves rising to about one metre. As Melbourne, a fine windy day, increasing cloud, rain tomorrow night. 
top temperature there of 16 and good news air quality should be very good throughout the day and as we take a look at our seven day forecast Sunday cold wet and windy yes another taste of winter 13 degrees snow across the Alps also some showers on Monday but clearing later in the day still a cold one around 13 degrees Tuesday fine although windy climbing up towards 16 degrees another change on Wednesday clearing up on Thursday Friday next week should be fine and a top temperature near 17 that's the latest weather enjoy the weekend Peter Thanks, David. And that's the way it is this Friday, the 3rd of August. Thanks for your company. Jennifer Adams will be here tomorrow night at 6. For now, from the 7 News team, have a great weekend. Good night. Money, money.